So on this channel, we love Shaylin Wright's videos. We learn a lot from Shaylin and a topic we haven't really talked about that Shaylin of course has covered beautifully is character relationships. Their video has a lot of great information to soak in, but I was particularly interested in a list of questions they like to ask about their own characters' relationships. I wanted to see if we could ask these questions about certain K-pop songs and gain a deeper understanding of those songs in a slightly unconventional way, as these questions were originally made with long-form fiction in mind. What wire rules made if not to be broken? First of all, I feel I should run through the questions we have and then we can move on to the songs. I'm not necessarily going to focus on every single question for every single song as some might not be particularly relevant or they could also be slightly redundant. The point is to examine the relationships of characters in K-pop songs and their functions. With that being said, the questions are as follows. What does the character fear most in this relationship? What does the character want from this relationship? What aspects of themselves does this relationship bring out or suppress? What do these characters not understand about each other? What do they understand about each other that no one else does? What contradiction does the relationship present themselves with? Who is the character with this person versus themselves and other people? How does this relationship change the characters slash what does it reveal about them? These might seem like things you would normally understand implicitly and sometimes they are, but I need to reiterate that understanding them explicitly allows you to make semantic connections that you would not make otherwise. I'm all about wondering, and there is in fact a way to teach yourself how to wonder most effectively. The first song I want to talk about is Off the Record by Ive. I tried to pick a bunch of songs with a lot of direct referrals, if not songs that were evident apostrophes. In this song, we know the speaker is afraid of being left when the unexpected happens, when there is a plot twist that makes the subject decide against staying. The subject really just wants a space to be honest without judgment and naturally brings out their sense of candor and ease in conversation, as well as their desire to know more or as much as possible, really. On the other hand, it suppresses their typical direct nature in terms of acknowledging the speaker's deeper worries. They don't understand that it takes a lot out of a person to be so deeply honest, but they do understand how to embody a sense of ease while together and discussing deeper topics together. There is an immense contradiction in that they are deeply afraid of being left while expressing how comfortable things are. They feel secure when they can communicate with each other, which eventually allows them to be honest in ways they can't be around anyone else, including when alone with themselves, but they very clearly have mixed feelings about their shared understanding that they need to sort through. The song sounds very light and pretty, but the relationship at its center is still pretty fucked up. In Birth by Artemis, the speaker fears embodying lies and they want to feel reassured that they know the truth about their relationship. It brings out incessant worries and attributes more weight to their words, but it suppresses both their logical internal and external processing. They yearn to understand things you'd expect to be relatively simple, like purpose, but also just conventions. They do understand each other's thoughts and feelings hold significant weight and they know how to find each other. At the same time, they do not know how to distinguish their findings and why they are different from others. They are very distressed while both limited and verbose in their expression at different points or in different ways, and they ultimately express their lack of understanding of themselves through their relationship with this specific person they care about. In Wicked Love by Anna, the speaker fears genuinely falling in love and facing the exact repercussions they feel they know will happen again if they do, as if all of those stipulations would be guaranteed. They are gluttonous for knowledge to distract themselves from the basics of communication, communication being very dangerous to them, and their relationship with the subject does in fact bring out a dangerous sense of intimacy and their conflicting understanding of their own desire. It suppresses their self-assured nature, or at least image, as well as their self-satisfaction. Throughout this, they do not understand what part of them, desire or disassociation, has more of a right to the trajectory of their life. The sense of intimacy combats other emotions like fear or shame, but it is apparent that in their current mental state, desire is a double-edged sword. The relationship almost has its own linguistic ecosystem eliciting thought processes they might be better off hiding. What they come to understand is that shame is a complex emotion and it never becomes simpler even when it presents itself in a theoretically simpler manner. Next, we have Shh by Kiss of Life. The speaker fears that the subject does not understand their own self-worth. As a result, they try to be very sympathetic, appreciative, encouraging, and supportive. There's no mean girl instinct to be seen here, but because the subject does not recognize all of the good in themselves, they do not see the speaker as telling the truth of the matter. 
They do admittedly share a sense of comfort alongside one another, like puzzle pieces that just fit together. And I find it important to ask if you actually undermine the good of others in doubting yourself. Also, is it actually diminishing toward others to be the societal image of humble? The speaker allows the subject to embody confidence how they so choose, providing paths to go down, completely disregarding the views of others. And theoretically, the subject has to decide to listen to good thoughts because they are there and convincing if you just put stock in them. Finally, we have Stranger by Sunmi. The speaker fears that they and the subject do not actually click because the speaker doesn't actually understand either of them. They want a new understanding, a sort of aha moment they feel they have been building toward. The relationship encourages their curiosity and readiness for their pursuit. It suppresses any feelings of disconnect or uncertainty. The speaker is very forthcoming, but on the other hand, we get nothing from the stranger except a symbol treated as a character, treated as someone close. Their attempt to pursue the stranger actually only reveals more about themselves. The stranger is symbolic of some part of the speaker's self that has remained hidden up to this point, and they are going through some kind of test to understand a part of themselves in an abstract way by understanding others. In doing exercises like these, we can determine subtextual information that might otherwise remain hidden to us, not necessarily because we fail to comprehend the text, Sometimes we consume poetry without establishing a genuine, conscious understanding of every detail. We know the facts, but we might hesitate when the conversation becomes more innately interpersonal or intrapersonal. It's also good to make a habit of asking yourself questions about what you read and what you write in order to keep your mind sharp and develop your arsenal of synaptic connections where implicit learning is increasingly possible. But anyway, thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, like for magic, subscribe for more, and maybe comment for my self-esteem. Bye.